So this is the end of winter of 1862 uh, up here on the eastern area. Uh, kind of rallied. Um, so on this turn we had a total of um, there was three um, on the first action cycle was, was a three, second actual action cycle was four, so it was um, the third action cycle was also four, and then the last action cycle was just two. And so we had some activity here because of Aunt Richmond and uh, the Confederates tried to clear out McDowell. Uh, this is Patterson tried to come in. He got stopped. Um, Jackson tried to knock McDowell out, but their die rolls were pretty bad and McGowan McClellan actually attacked out and he rolled pretty good and the Confederates enough to retreat away but nothing to uh, prevent the forcing back the Union player on that one. Uh, the coasts were pretty quiet for this turn, not much happened there. Well, over here in the western uh, area, uh, Grant came in and actually rolled pretty well. Uh, took the uh, Cumberland River and Tennessee Rivers, uh, took Clarksville. Uh, Johnson had to come back out of Kentucky uh, because of Grant's good die rolls. Um, and everything's quiet in Missouri still. Uh, most of the activity on this turn was in the eastern uh, part. And we'll set up for spring 1861, uh, two. So this is the end of the action cycle four. So ending the turn for spring of uh, 1862 basically turn five uh, we had for this whole year um, for action cycles we had two four two and five so McClellan tried to take Lee and Fredericksburg and uh, failed to push him out but they lost each an SP uh, Jackson was able to take back somewhat of the Shenandoah, but muffed his role on Harper's Ferry. Um, and then down here, Grant and Buell taking Nashville, pushed Johnson all the way back. Um, Rosecrans and Thomas Poot moved in here. But with these forts here at Memphis and on the river, it's going to get uh, hard to push them out. Uh, Trans Mississippi was pretty much quiet the whole time, and naval one activity uh, right here tried to take the inlet and failed. Um, yeah, so Union's barely holding on. They have eight victory points. They needed twelve on this one, and uh, so they're getting close to the end if they don't really push out through 1862, which is the key here is basically if they can, uh, the Confederates hold uh, and they win by uh, the automatic victory. Um, so we'll see, because Memphis is the key to take um, to not lose by that Thing, or if I can get New Orleans, which is problematic because they have 
fort already built there. So uh, the union's got some hard things to do, and with these new rules, I noticed the options of beelining. Uh, one of the tactics was to have Grant sitting at Fort Donaldson area where Thomas is and zipping on down to Memphis with the uh, two extra movement points as a way of doing it as an option uh, clearing out the river so we'll have to see how this uh, goes for the rest of 1862 so we're now going to be in summer so this is the end of summer one of 1862. So the activity in the east has been basically Jackson uh, kind of tried to clean out the Shenandoah, but went over, took one uh, graft in West Virginia, swung around and tried to knock Burnside out of Strasburg uh, rolled really bad. Hooker, who was hanging out in Harper's Ferry, came over and pushed. Uh, well, Jackson ran away, so not to lose because he was demoralized from losing the battle against Burnside. Uh, shocker. Um, Lee and McClellan just hanging out there. Forts build up in the east. Uh, the turns activation points was kind of slow for this one, which really hurts uh, Union uh, because it's up to them to win the battles, uh, take the territory. So the slower the activations, the better for the Confederates they can maintain. So it was actually 3, 1, 2, and 1. Um, so out here in the west, Bragg and Grant kind of stuck there. Buell kind of came out because Forrest kind of cut the supply and then went over and retook Fort Donaldson area, which is going to make um, Supplying uh, troops a little awkward because even though there's no fort there, the rivers are still open, but the railroad's cut, so I can't railroad easily troops to in the area a little bit uh, down to Rosecrans and Sherman. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, Pope's moved down to kind of take the east, the western bank of Mississippi, hopefully, to take the two forts. Uh, the only other interesting thing is Galveston was taken by a Navy attack. Um, so the Union player is up to 10 victory points. They need 15, but it's is the level so they're still good next turn is going to be 18 so they got to really bump up taking places hopefully they can do it because the confederates were kind of wide open right here with uh, no troops at all and Sherman and Rosecans are small forces and so let's see how it goes in the This is the end of summer two of 1862, turn seven. Uh, for the whole turn, uh, we had three, four, two, four actions, things, and the whole turn didn't really turn out to do anything apart from die rolling, like Hooker couldn't take beat out the militia there on the last turn to get that victory point, but they all made maintained in the Shenandoah Valley.
Jackson rolled terribly. Lee did two against Banks, of all people. Um, McClellan was pushed out and then kind of came back in. But Stewart ran away. Uh, unlike over here in Columbus, uh, Rosecrans took that. Uh, Forrest didn't run away and he got taken out. Sherman's been sitting there. Grant is still sitting in front of Chattanooga. But Wheeler and Forrest have been cutting the line here between Nashville. Forcing the Union player to keep the supply line open. And the other thing to note is Taylor to push Curtis back. But both lost an SP, which is hard for the Confederates, but everything else was pretty much quiet. Uh, they only have nine victory points to the 18, so they're getting closer to the 12, which might happen in next turn. So if the Reunion player doesn't start taking some victory points next turn, they might lose outright. This is the problem of 1862. Uh, if you don't get going pretty quickly, the new player could be out of the game by this turn. So I made an error. The uh, turns um, uh, action points was actually not four, uh, three, four, two, four. It was actually one, four, two, four. Um, so, two slow turns, two uh, quick turns. And the other thing is the new rule of the uh, cavalry officers, if they're in supply, or <clears throat> when they're deplaced, they're not lost for a whole turn. So losing Forrest in Columbus wasn't as bad as before, so that's a nice rule change. I was like, oh, he didn't run away, so no big deal um, with that rule change. So that's um, some things to note. So this is the end of turn 8, fall of 1862. Uh, the Union player is squeaking by. Um, because next turn, if they don't get some more victory points, they're going to be uh, losing. Uh, Lee with Jackson took, booted out Shenandoah. Banks, Burnside were pushed out. Uh, Sumner was too. They took back Harper's Ferry and uh, Augsburg. Oh, uh, Strasburg. Um, and tried to push Burnside out of that fort to try to go for Washington. Didn't work. Um, Grant is still stuck here with Bragg because the action cycle here was two, four, one, and two. But the big thing here was McPherson came out of Columbus marched down and took out the two forts here and took Memphis. Um, because the forts only had one SP. And uh, with five, he kind of helped with uh, naval support and cards, getting the DRMs kind of pushed through. Um, luckily, good die rolling. Uh, Sherman tried to knock out Hardy, but didn't and keeping uh, activity here kept SPs from being in Memphis and Chattanooga so that kind of helped out and everybody else was pretty quiet uh, and a little activity here to force 
SPs down here. And uh, well, that's the end of fall. So if uh, the Union player didn't hold on to take Memphis, they would probably be. Yeah, they would have lost this turn. So they got to do some more activity on this turn. Um, yeah, without this moving with the cards, it's kind of very uh, interesting here. On to the next turn.